In this video, I'm going to quickly show how to create a new project in IntelliJ IDEA and push it to GitHub and have GitHub Actions automatically run unit test. Now, I have a longer video that goes into the details of how it all works behind the scenes, but this is simply a quick start to get you going. So some steps we're going to do, we're going to start a project, we're going to push it, configure it correctly, update the POM XML, configure it on GitHub for GitHub Actions, run the unit tests, and then watch the results. So let's start by creating a new project in IntelliJ IDEA. I've named it GitHub Actions Quick Start, Java, and very important click Maven here. Uh, that's how I'm going to do my project. You could also use Gradle. I didn't see any way to do it with the built-in IntelliJ Builder. Also JDK 11 I found works a bit better on GitHub Actions because they have a a, basically a Docker image or some kind of image like that that's set to JDK 11. We'll go ahead and choose create and we get a basic POM XML as we would with a Maven project. Very important we need to add a few dependencies here. I will push this out to GitHub obviously and put the link in the video so that you can go and just grab this if you wish. But a couple things we're adding here is first of all the Surefire plugin. And GitHub Actions what it will do is it will run a, a Maven package essentially or some kind of Maven build. One of the steps in that is the test step. And if it finds a Surefire plugin, it's going to use that to say, OK, run my unit test for me. Additionally, I've added a little present here, which is a way to exclude tests from being run. Maybe if you're doing test-driven development and you have a test that you know is broken, uh, you could put it in there. Uh, that, uh, JUnit Jupyter, this will give us what we need. I'll go ahead and tell Maven to refresh and download sources. Now it's fine to go ahead and commit the project now, but one note, if we were to push it right now, GitHub would not necessarily recognize it as a Maven project. I mean, even though it has the POM XML, it wouldn't know that we want to set this up for testing because we have some empty folders here under source and test, and those aren't actually going to push until there's something in it. So in the interest of making a quick video, I've created a very simple test that I'm going to paste and not only is the location important, but the name is also important because that Surefire plugin is going to look for a class that ends with the word test. Now, this is a fairly straightforward test, one behavior-driven design test in it that is essentially populating a vehicle data class. And that vehicle data class has a go method. So we're running the vehicle 100 miles or kilometers, and then we're validating that the gallons of gas have changed and that the odometer has changed. So guess what? We need that class to test as well. And I've created that. I'll go ahead and paste that in here. No big surprise here. Three attributes, miles per gallon, gallons of gas, and odometer, the natural getter and setter methods, and then a very simple go method that we are testing in this vehicles.test. Looks like it needs me to import a cert equal, so no problem. I will go ahead and import those. And at this point, we have a project that builds. So I'm going to go ahead and commit and then push to a new GitHub repository. Initial commit, and then GitHub, share project on GitHub. I have already logged in to GitHub through IntelliJ, so if you haven't done that, you'll need to do that, but it knows who I am, so I can go ahead and choose share. And we see the project has been shared. Let's go ahead and click and take a look at it. So sure enough, we have here a Disco Spiff initial commit. We have one commit. We can take a quick check and ensure that our classes have made it, and there we go, there's vehicle test. Next thing is we need to set up the GitHub Actions, and it will give us a little help here in setting it up. Let's actually take a quick look at the before. So notice before I set up GitHub Actions that we have our commit history, but there's no indication that the tests have passed or failed. Our goal here is to get a ideally a green checkbox, but or green check also could be a red X to indicate that it has run the unit tests. Let's go ahead and go to Actions. One of the options it has given us is Java with Maven, build and test a Java project with Apache Maven. I'll go ahead and choose Configure. This is going to give me a maven.yaml file and put it directly into my workspace, into my GitHub repository. It will actually create a commit out of this. And just quickly what this is saying is if there's a push or if there's a pull request, run this job. Check out our sources, use JDK 11. And then we have a Maven command down here, maven-b, run in batch mode, package, where package is a phase of the Maven lifecycle, and package runs several goals. One of those goals is the test goal, which will kick off our test. Looks good to me. We'll start the commit. 
back to our repo and notice two commits, but also notice this amber light right here, which indicates that it's currently working through that YAML script we just gave it. And we can click and see the details as it's in progress. And this is similar output that you would see if you ran a Maven build on your command line. We'll go ahead and let it go. Notice now it has a test step and it says test run one, failure zero. So that's a good sign. But we don't always have to dig all the way down here to see that it's successful. If we go back out, notice, yes, we got a green check. Now, one little side note. I noticed when I did the commit and push earlier, I forgot to uh, commit and push the pom.xml. So I paused the video and I pushed that. But just make sure when you do the commit and push that you push all of that. So you'll see that my commits are a little bit higher than before. But nonetheless, with the whole project pushed, we see now that the test result is successful. Now, just for fun, let's see what happens if we break the test. Notice we start the odometer at zero. We tell the vehicle to go 100, and then we validate that the odometer reads 100 after we've told it to go 100. Let's intentionally make this different. We'll make it 105. I'll commit and push. Prior to this push, I had five commits. I'll go ahead and refresh. We see now it's six commits, and we see that the build is running again, so we can click on details. And again, we're anticipating that this is going to fail. Sure enough, we have our failure. We see the output shows test run one, failures one, and we can see here a very specific error message that says the number expected was 105, which we know is incorrect, and the actual number is 100. So it tells us exactly where the test fails. Now, if we go back to our repository, we'll see that instead of a green check, we have a red X. And again, we can click on details and navigate back to that page. So GitHub Actions, a really easy way to create a project with unit tests where the unit test will run on every commit and push. And why is that important? Well, it's important because it reminds us every time we commit and push, whether or not we have regression errors over those things that have unit tests. And this is important in modern software development because we tend to have many, many people working on one project and that project might get released weekly, as is the case often with mobile apps. You could have dozens of developers, maybe even hundreds in a weekly release cycle. So you need to make sure that your app is in a stable state. So the key to that, number one, is to have good unit test coverage where it's appropriate. And number two, have that unit test run automatically as part of a CI CD pipeline. And GitHub Actions essentially is a CI CD pipeline. Additionally, if you'd like some experience with CI CD, this is an excellent way to do it because GitHub is easy. It's probably where you already have your project. And by just making that change to the POM XML and adding that GitHub Action, you get that YAML file and you get started practicing CI CD. So I hope this video is helpful. If you're curious how this works under the covers, as I mentioned, I have a longer video that actually goes into the details, talks about how the uh, Maven process works, and talks about how to exclude certain tests. So if that's of interest, have a look. I hope you found this video helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.